morning. Good morning again. Yes, it's a blessing to be able to be in the house one more time. Many are looking at us out in Texas, Louisiana, even down in Fed. And you all always, my sister-in-law, down in Port Gibson, she's watching us right now. So good morning to all you all. All of you all that is listening to us across the airway, if you ever in Jackson, come by. Reverend John Johnson, every Sunday, going to be bringing the word. And we just ask you to pray for our church and all churches all across the main country. And we are so glad that you are part of the service today. The earth is the Lord and the fullness thereof, the word and they that dwell therein. Lift up your heads, O ye gates, even lift them up, ye everlasting doors, and the King of glory shall come in. Who is the King of glory? The Lord of hosts, he is the King of glory. May God have a blessing to read and hear us of God's word. Please remain standing. The choir is going to give us a number, and Deacon McNair is going to lead us in prayer. God bless you. Lord, you are good, and your mercy endureth forever. Am I right, morning star? Is he good to you? I don't believe is he good to you. We're going to get into the service this morning. That's our selection for today. You are good. Here we go. One, two, and. Lord, you are good and your mercy endure forever. Lord, you are good. Lord, you are good and your mercy endure forever. People of every nation. People of every nation. And to from, from generation to Hallelujah, 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 we worship you for who you are. We worship you, we worship you, we worship you.
Amen. Amen. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, thank you for this opportunity to come out this morning, even in the rain, to worship you. We know with beyond a shadow of a doubt that you're good, and you've been good to us. And you've been good to everyone, even those that don't know that you are the Savior of the world. Lord, we're asking that you let us be a light unto the world, and that we shine it so that when people see us, they can know that these are people that are different. These are people that have been sanctified, and we are being sanctified, Lord. We ask that you continue to work with us and help us to do the things that you have us to do while we have breath. It says that we should work while it's day because the night cometh when we cannot work. Lord, thank you for this opportunity to stand be before you this morning and to say that you are good. We talked about in our Sunday school class this morning that you are the great I am. You are the bread of life. You are the light of the world. You said to us that I am the way, the truth, and the light. Nobody comes to the Father unless we come through you, the Lord Jesus Christ. Lord, we ask him for mercy and grace. We know that we are sinners and we are in need of your mercy and your grace. Lord, forgive us. Strengthen us where we're weak. Help us to do better. Help us to walk like Jesus walked. Lord, we know that, that we live in trying times today. That we have issues, water crisis and uh, crime crisis, but we know that you're able, Lord, to deliver us. We ask, Lord, that you have mercy on those that do not know your name and who you are. Help them to understand that Jesus is the way. Lord, we also thank you for our pastor this morning that's going to preach the word. We thank you for your word, which helps to be a light unto our path and guides us. Lord, we ask for mercy and grace upon our leaders. Lord, uh, you've appointed them to, to, to lead us and guide us. Lord, continue to bless us and keep us in your love and kindness. As we approach this new year, Lord, we pray that we and all churches and other institutions that are open in your name, that they would prosper and that we would be in health even as our souls prosper. Lord, we ask this in the mighty, marvelous name of Jesus. His name we pray. Amen. Well, let the church say amen. <laughs> We greet you in his name and declare that it is good for us to be here on this second Sunday of this brand new year, the year of 2023. Uh, this year, we're going to do something slightly different. Uh, we're going to add in a, a welcome of our guests and our visitors. And uh, this year, we're going to uh, uh, have uh, most of the members of our congregation to give it at different times and so you may be asked uh, to give it and I, I pray that you would uh, help us in doing that but this is to identify our members sometimes we see people by faces but we don't know their names and that kind of thing and sometimes we could have been a part of the church a long time but don't know people uh, per se by name and I'm, I'm hoping that this will be a, a wonderful technique to help us to get to know each other and know each other by name. So we're trying to reach out to people who uh, perhaps don't say anything in, in the midst of the worship service, uh, 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 but uh, sometimes we see them, we don't know their name or their family name. And so we're going to try to break the ice this year. And uh, in each Sunday, we're gonna have someone different uh, to do it. And, uh, and I've asked this person to do it, uh, to be the very first person. And, uh, and I'm going to allow her to come in her special way to welcome us on this morning. Good morning, Morning Star. Good morning. Well, everybody knows Hazel Cannon. <laughs> 
Uh, I'm asking all who are visiting with Morningstar this morning, will you please stand? All visitors. Pastor Johnson, Morningstar Church family, this is our visitor for today. To you, visitor, we thank you for choosing Morningstar as your place of worship for today. Thank you for coming, and please come again. Thank you.
heart is filled with despair, just remember God cares. God cares for you. say amen again. Thank God for our young adults who are leading us in a very special way on today. Amen. There's nothing like the name of Jesus. And uh, the hymnology says that it's music to my ears. And uh, we come before his presence text says with thanksgiving and enter his course with praise. I'm trying to do something a little different this morning so that I don't mess myself up. A name I love to hear I love to sing his word it sounds 
like me, Ziki, my the sweetest name on earth. Mm, oh, how I love Jesus. your attention this morning uh, to the book of Daniel chapter 5 <clears throat> and I hate trying your patience this morning uh, but for you to get the gist of it I want to read the whole thing <laughs> uh, Daniel chapter 5 uh, I'm reading from the New Living Translation you're welcome to read alone in whatever translation you have Daniel chapter 5 beginning at verse number 1 There you would find these words. Many years later, King Belchizer gave a great feast of, for 1,000 of his nobles, and he drank wine with them. And while Belchizer was drinking the wine, he gave orders to bring the gold and silver cups from his predecessors that Nebuchadnezzar had taken from the temple in Jerusalem. He wanted to drink from them with his nobles, his wives, and his concubines. So they brought these gold cups and taken from the temple, the house of God in Jerusalem. And the king and his nobles and his wives and his concubines drank from them. And while they drank from them, they praised their idols made of gold, silver, bronze, iron, wood, and stone. And suddenly they saw the finger of a hand writing on the plaster walls of the king's palace near the lampstand. And the king himself saw the hand as it wrote, and his face was turned pale with fright, and his knees buckled uh, or knocked together in fear of God, uh, and his legs gave way beneath him. The king shouted for the enchanters, astrologers, and the fortune tellers to be brought uh, before him, and he said to these wise men of Babylon, whoever can read the writing and tell me what it means will be dressed in purple robes of royal honor and would have a gold chain placed around his neck and he will become the third highest ruler in the kingdom. But when all the king's wise men had come in, none of them could read the writing or tell what it meant. So the king grew even more alarmed and he faced, his face turned pale and his nobles too were shaken. But when the queen mother heard what was happening, she hurried into the banquet hall, and she said to Belshazzar, Long live the king, and do not be so pale or frightened. There is a man in the kingdom who has within him the spirit of the holy gods. During Nebuchadnezzar's reign, this man was found to have insight, understanding, wisdom like that of, uh, uh, of, of the gods. Uh, your predecessor, the king, your uh, uh, king Nebuchadnezzar, made him chief over the magicians, the enchanters, the astrologers, the fortune tellers of Babylon. And this man, Daniel, whom the king named Belshazzar, had exceptionally ability and is filled with divine knowledge and understanding. And he can interpret dreams, explain riddles, and solve difficult problems. Call for Daniel and he will tell you what the writing means. So Daniel brought him in before the king, and the king asked him, are you Daniel, one of the exiles brought from Judah by the, my predecessor, King Nebuchadnezzar? 
He says, I've heard that you have the spirit of God within you and that you are filled with insight, understanding, and wisdom. My wise men and chanters have tried to read the words on the wall and tell me their meaning, but they could not do it. I am told that you can give interpretations and solve difficult problems. And if you can read these words and tell me the meaning, you will be clothed in purple, uh, in, uh, uh, purple robes of royal honor, and you will have gold chains placed around your neck, and you will become the third highest ruler in the kingdom. But Daniel answered the king, King, uh, keep your gifts or give them to someone else. But I will tell you, what the writing means. Your majesty, the most high God, gave sovereign majesty, glory, and honor to your predecessor, Nebuchadnezzar. He made him so great that the people of all races and nations and languages trembled before him in fear. He filled those he wanted to kill and, uh, and he spared those he wanted to spare. He honored those he wanted to honor and disgraced those he wanted to disgrace. But when his heart and his mind was puffed up with arrogance, he was brought down from his royal throne and stripped of his glory. He was driven from human society and he was given a mind of a wild animal and he lived among the wild donkeys and he ate grass like a cow and he was drenched with the dew of heaven until he learned that the most high God rules over the kingdoms of the world and appoints anyone he desires to rule over them. He says, you are his successor, O Belshazzar, and you knew all this, yet you have not humbled yourself, for you have a proudly defied the Lord of heaven and have these cups from his temple brought before you. You and your nobles and your wives and concubines have been drinking from them while praising the gods, that is, the little g, of silver, gold, bronze, iron, wood, and stone, gods that neither see nor hear nor know anything at all. But you have not honored the God who gives the breath of life and controls your destiny. So God has sent this hand to write this message. And this is the message that was written, Mene, Mene, Tekel, person. That is the word means, Mene means number. God has numbered the days of your reign and has brought to it an end. Tekel means weighed. You have been weighed and on the balances and have not measured up. Person, which means that you are, your kingdom has been divided and given to the Meds and the Persian. Then at Belshazzar's command, Daniel was dressed in purple robe. Gold chain had hung on his neck, and he was proclaimed the third highest ruler in the kingdom. And that very night, somebody hear that today, that very night, Belshazzar, the Babylonian king, was killed. Amen. Thus in the reading, you may be seated in his presence, the grass withered and the flower faded. But the word of our God shall stand forever. For y'all, for just a few minutes, I just want to talk about hmm, God is trying to tell you something. God is trying to tell you something. Other day, I was uh, driving down uh, 49 and I uh, I come to a light, and uh, me and another car was at the light, and uh, the other car, uh, I yield uh, to the red light, and the other car just simply drove through the light. Uh, that happens quite often on, on 49 at different intersections. And I thought about the reasons and the min min minutes of, perhaps he thought, even though the, red, the light was red, Nobody else was coming, and he could proceed like he wanted to proceed. But I would, I, I would suggest, my brothers and sisters, and I sat there and thought, uh, perhaps he didn't know the rules of the road. <laughs> because lights are there to help us. <laughs> they are there to warn us that impending traffic that we may not see may be approaching us. 
and yet it's not good for us to disobey the warning signs. And I want to suggest to you this morning, y'all, that God himself has a way of sending us some warning signs. God himself is trying to tell us some things, and it will do us well if we will take the time to heed what the Lord is saying. And sometimes, y'all, when God is speaking, sometimes we think he's speaking to other folk, and, and we can identify where that message needs to go and to whom it needs to go. But sometimes, y'all, God is talking directly unto us. And I want to suggest to you, my brothers and sisters, maybe you can ponder with this text across this week and, and, and examine your own life and see where God may be speaking unto you. I want to suggest, my brothers and sisters, there are a number of things. Matter of fact, I, I, I literally have seven things I want to tell you today. Uh, I know you're only going to hear three of them. So I may cut one of them out, <laughs> but uh, I, 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 I want to suggest, y'all, that there are some things that God, God lifts up in this text. Uh, uh, the, the background is, is uh, uh, Babylon had, had secured the uh, Jews, uh, both of Judah and Israel, and, and uh, uh, King Nebuchadnezzar, uh, Nebuchadnezzar was one of the most well-known kings, and uh, uh, King Nebuchadnezzar, uh, uh, first of all, had this interaction uh, uh, with this young uh, Jewish boy that was brought over and he trained him and fed him and prepared him uh, for the work and, and, uh, and he found favor in Nebuchadnezzar's eyes and, and, and God used him uh, in that kingdom and, and, and the Bible says that, that uh, not long thereafter uh, when the opening of this text King Nebuchadnezzar has died and uh, he's gone on and some 25 years later uh, there is a new king that's sitting upon the throne and, and the Bible says that uh, this king has not experienced all the blessings that King Nebuchadnezzar had and King Nebuchadnezzar recognized that it wasn't because he was such a great king but because of the God of the children of Israel was for him. And I want to argue, my brothers and sisters, God for you is more than the whole wide world against you. And I want to suggest he had more success, not because of who he was, but because who was in the camp. And the Bible says <clears throat> that, uh, that Babylon uh, was beginning to be uh, sieged by the Medes and the Persians, they were on both sides of them, and, uh, and they, were, they were surrounding the city. They were making uh, provisions that they may overtake Babylon. Babylon was a, was a large city, had fortified walls and tall, tall gates, and, and nobody had ever been able to destroy ba Babylon. Nobody could ever come, because even if they shot arrows, they couldn't reach the the heights of where the, the walls uh, were. And, uh, and so uh, they knew that, uh, that, that, that there were those who were weighing against them, but they also knew that they would not prosper because they had built such a fortified kingdom. They had built such a fortified wall and, and, and everything around them was guarded and protected. And, and, and the king knew all that was happening around the wall, outside the wall. And the people became frustrated because of war and rumors of war. And, and the king says that what I'm going to do is I'm going to throw a party. <laughs> But I'm going to throw a party like we've never seen before. The Bible says he, he, he invited some thousand noblemen. And, and the text says plus wives and, and yeah, cummerbunds. And, 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 and all of them were able and guided uh, within the, uh, the party. And the Bible says the party got so good. <laughs> King was so excited. To, uh, listen, the young folks say it was lit up in there that day. <laughs> and, and, and the Bible, Bible says that the king says that uh, what I'm going to do is y'all go down uh, to that place where King Nebuchadnezzar has assigned those vessels that nobody uses. Uh, and he said, I want you to bring those vases and, and we're going to drink out of those tonight. Listen, we're going to party like... 
Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, 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 and they, they, they were ready. They were partying. They were having a good time. And, and he brought forth the vessels, uh, these sacred vessels, these vessels that had been set aside uh, uh, by Nebuchadnezzar. And the Bible says they began to drink out, out of the vessels. and They began to party. They began to have a great time. Music was right and everything was jamming. And the Bible says in the midst of the party, while a thousand plus four are gathered on the inside, the Bible says something happened. And the Bible says all of a sudden, when they looked upon the wall, there was a hand, not a body, not an arm, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah just, a, just a hand. And, and the Bible says, though it was disbodied from a physical being, they could see the hand writing on the wall. I don't know about you, my brothers and sisters. I don't even have to be at a party. I don't even have to be drunk to see a hand writing on the wall that will cause me some trepidation. The Bible says that, that, that the king stopped in his thing. The Bible says he, he began to, his knees began to buckle. His, his face turned pale and, and, and fear came upon the king. And I want to argue you in trouble when the king is afraid. The Bible says, but all they could see was writing on the wall. And, and, and my, my brothers and sisters, what I love about this is that when God is doing something, God don't have to do a whole lot of stuff. He doesn't have to write your whole history. All God's got to do is to write a few words on the wall. You, you remember uh, Jesus had, had come with the lady that was caught in adultery. And you remember uh, uh, they brought her to Jesus and, and asked what would happen. And, and the Bible said Jesus bent down in the ground. And nobody knows what Jesus wrote, but he didn't write a whole lot. He wrote enough for everybody to see themselves in the midst of the writing. God, my brothers and sisters, he just writes enough so that John Johnson and, and you can see ourselves in light of his word. The Bible says that he wrote on the wall. The king became afraid, could not understand it, could not comprehend it. And the Bible said that he calls for his soothsayers. He he calls his enchanters. He, he calls his fortune tellers. And the Bible says that he expects them to read the writing on the wall. The Bible says that they come in and they recognize they have been commanded by the king. And they stand and they're looking at the wall. And the Bible says they could not only could they not interpret the word, but they couldn't read the word. Oh, help me somebody. The Bible says they were stuck. They couldn't. They couldn't read that. The, uh, they were Aramaican. They read and wrote in Aramaic. Uh, but this word was written in Hebrew. And my brothers and sisters, sometimes God will set you up that only somebody can interpret his word. The Bible says that they became upset because the king promised them so much, and, and yet they could not do it. And the Bible says that somewhere in the midst of the party that the queen heard word of it. And the Bible says the queen was not his wife. Uh, it is believed that uh, she may have been his mother, uh, a, a concubine of uh, King Nebuchadnezzar, in which uh, 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 someone else married her, and then he subjectively would become the king. But, but listen, the Bible says that as he is stunned and not knowing how to read. She says that I know somebody. And, uh, and the text says, she says his name is Daniel. And the Bible says that he's a man of wisdom. He's a man full of the Holy Spirit. He's the man that King Nebuchadnezzar depended upon. And he can read the writing. The Bible says that they summoned, uh, they summoned Daniel. Uh, Daniel, you remember, uh, he was the one that refused to, to pray. You, you remember Daniel. Daniel was the one that had the conversation with Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. That, uh, 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 Daniel uh, 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 was a young man then, but now Daniel is 80 years old. <laughs> Gray headed, gray beard, uh, uh, and maybe his steps are not as strong as they once were. But the Bible says he came at the prince, uh, 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 at the king's command. The Bible says that when he shows up, the king says, So you are Daniel. You are one of those boys of Judah. Uh, 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 
uh, you, you're one of the ones that we brought over. And, and he, he belittles Daniel. Uh, he, he treats him as a nobody. And, and, and he says, uh, uh, but they tell me that you can read the word. And the Bible says as if Daniel goes to the wall, Daniel walks over and he begins to look at what's on the wall. And the Bible suggests to us that Daniel not only could read the word, but Daniel could interpret the word. And the Bible says that, that, that Daniel uh, begins to read and, 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 and he, he, he hears what the king said. The king says that if you can read it, if you can interpret it, he says, I, I'll, I'll, I'll give you gold. <laughs> I put chains on your neck and I, I put a, a purple robe on you. I, I'll give you all these things and I'll make you third in command. The Bible says that Daniel kept on reading. And Daniel finally says to the king, he says, I don't need your stuff, king. What you offer me doesn't add up to much of anything for me. I, I don't need that. He says, but I will tell you what the word means. And the Bible says that he, he, he begins to read the word to him. And, and as he's looking, he says that, that Mene, Mene, Teko, Perez. But the Bible says that he says, I'm going to tell you what this means. He says, not only has God written on the wall, but, but God left his word on the wall. And he says, Mene simply means uh, that it's a, it's a number, numerical system. It's a uh, currency. And he says that, that literally, uh, Mene means uh, that your days are numbered. Uh, that, that, that God has been looking at you and, and he, he has determined uh, that your days are numbered. He says, but uh, Tico, uh, it means to weigh. And, and he says that uh, 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 that when God looks at you, he's waiting to see how you measure up. And the Bible says in Persia, uh, it, 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 it means different in Aramaic and, 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 and certainly in, in Hebrew. Uh, Hebrew, there's no vowels in it. And, uh, and he uses it in a form uh, that it has a double meaning. And, uh, and what it means, he said, is that your kingdom will be divided. And he, he lifts up this idea that the Persians will be a part of your division. And, 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 and the Bible, Bible says that this is, in essence, what, uh, what he says to the king. But listen, can I break this down for you for, in, in just three points, and I promise you I'm done. He says that, that number one, not, not only is God writing, not, not only uh, has God done so with his word, he says, but, but God is watching. And he says, that's what it means by Mene. He says that God has numbered your days because you have not been honoring God, but God has been watching you. And I want to argue, my brothers and sisters, there are some things in life we think that we may be getting away with, but I want to argue God sees all things, and, and God knows all things. And I want to suggest, y'all, that sometimes we've got to beware that we serve a patient, gracious, merciful God, but we also serve a God that is a judge, and sooner than later, his patience will run out. And I would argue, my brothers and sisters, uh, when I was a child, my, my mom would, would remind us that uh, I, I see what you're doing. I see what you're doing. And, and she may not get you right then, but if you keep on your patience, uh, her patience is going to run out. And you do know what I mean when I say she's going to get you. <laughs> the text the text says that he, he declares that, that God is watching. And I, and I want to suggest, y'all, that even when you're at the stoplight and nobody is there, God is still. Listen, when, 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 when co-worker has said something and, and, and you want to say, yeah, yeah, that other language. And, and, uh, uh, but just remember, y'all, that though you may be alone, God is Listen, listen, when you're talking to your child and, and anger has uplifted to you and, and, and you become more angry than loving, I want to suggest God is. 
Listen, when you're talking to your spouse, and, and, and listen, and they may have said all kinds of things that uh, irritate you and, and, and all that kind of thing, but you've got to know that you are a child of God and God is. I want to suggest to you, my brothers and sisters, uh, that, that he says in this first thing that you got to know, God is watching. But, but listen, y'all, there's another important piece of this, y'all, is that what, what Daniel said, and I wish I had time, y'all. Daniel said that you have not the only one that's been in this shape. He says your, your father, King Nebuchadnezzar, he had been in this same shape and pride built up in him. And he says, and you, he allowed pride to overtake him that he began to do things his own way, when and where, how he wanted to do it. And God was not satisfied and God brought judgment upon him. And the Bible says he was out in the fields like an animal. He was eating grass like an animal. Listen, he, he did all the things that animals did until he ultimately repented. And I want to argue, my brothers and sisters, that I know we serve a loving, kind God, but we also have a God of justice. In due season, God can pronounce judgment upon you. Listen, I just want to warn us that God is trying to tell us something. Listen, listen, the text says that not only was he days numbered, but the text says to kill uh, means to wait. When I was a when I was a little fellow, my my grandmother used to uh, send us out, and and we would have to uh, shell peas and do all these things, and and I, I hated shelling peas. Uh, God, I, I I can't even I can't even look at a pea like that now today. And uh, but it would give me such a headache as a year, little boy. I think that's the reason why I have migraines today. But uh, but uh, they they would take those peas, and we used to have to shell those peas in these big old. White pans, y'all remember that back in the day? And uh, you take those, and, and, but grandmama had a way. She would, she would always try to help us, and she was always teaching and training us. And, uh, and so uh, she would take the peas, and, 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 and she would give you money based upon how many peas you shelled. My sister always outnumbered me in peas because I couldn't stand the smell of them. Uh, but, but she would take them, she'd put them on a scale, and, uh, <laughs> and my grandmother wouldn't let you weigh them. <laughs> but she would weigh them herself. And she had this balancer, and balancer on one side and the product on the other side, and it would weigh uh, the product. And, uh, and, and, and based upon how much you've done, how much it weighed would be how, what the, uh, the blessing was that she would give to you. And in, in his day, there was no cash register, but everything was weighed. And, uh, and, 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 and then you had to put it on, and the balancer would be there. And, and, and it, it, val it gave value to what you were purchasing, and, and which, which lets us know that sometimes stuff can look good but it didn't weigh nothing. <laughs> Stuff can seem really, really uh, 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 valuable, but when it's put on the scale, it didn't weigh anything. And if it didn't weigh anything, it didn't have much value. And oh, my brothers and sisters, what God was trying to tell King Betshower, he says that you, you look good. <laughs> You, you look priestly and uh, 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 you look uh, uh, honorable uh, in your royal diadem. But he says, but God has been weighing you and you don't weigh very much. My fact, he says, you're, you are lightweight, if you would. And all my brothers and sisters, I would argue, sometimes, y'all, in life, we got all the pedigrees. And we got all of this and that. Uh, but listen, it looks good to the world, but when it's measured with God's balancer, we don't weigh very much. Uh, listen, we got all the capital and we got all the money in the bank. But listen, my brothers and sisters, sometimes when God weighs us, we don't weigh, weigh very much in God's kingdom. Sometimes we look good, got all our smelling good stuff. We hit right in every different spot. But listen, my brothers and sisters, we look good, but there's nothing down on the inside of us. And my brothers and sisters, I would argue your good-looking self won't get you anywhere other than looking good in a casket. But I want to argue you need to look better than a casket 
in the kingdom of heaven. And listen, my brothers and sisters, I would argue this body won't get you over there. As a matter of fact, this body must be put earth to earth and ashes to ashes and dust to dust. But God wants to know what's in your heart. Your heart, your soul shall be with him forever. And the question this morning is, what do you weigh with God's balance? Listen, you may always outweigh me, but listen, I'm not the equalizer. God himself is the equalizer. And on that day, he shall judge us all. And the question is, how much do you weigh? And I would argue, my brothers and sisters, he tells, he tells King, King uh, Belshazzar, he said, brother, your problem is that you are just a, a lightweight. You don't mean much to God. And, and, and listen, my brothers and sisters, because of how he treated God, how he treated God's things uh, was an indication of how he loved and respected God. My question to you this morning, how do you treat God's things? How do you treat God's people? How do you honor God in your ways and you do? Listen, I just want to pause and tell you, God is trying to tell you something. Listen, my last thing, y'all, and I promise you I'm done, is that the Bible says that he declares unto them this, this whole thing of uh, peration. Uh, the Bible says this is one of the uh, 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 currencies of that day. It, was, it would be half of a mene, and uh, it would be 25 shekels per, per se, if you would. And, and he says what, what God is saying here is that not only has he judged you, not only does he say that you don't weigh much, he says, but God is going to divide your kingdom. That was the last thing that any of them ever thought could have happened, uh, was that for their kingdom to be captured by anybody else. Nobody else was strong enough. Nobody, but listen, what the king didn't know <clears throat> is why the king was throwing a party, why the king had it lit up in there. The Bible says the Persians and the Medes have come together. And, uh, and they saw them, and they thought they were trying to build hills to get over uh, the wall. But what they didn't realize was that they weren't building hills, but uh, the old folk call it mohills. The, they were digging underneath the earth. They were going underneath the river that flowed into the city. And they had men who were assigned to go in underneath the city and to come up and take over the wall. But, but they didn't know that because they were whining and drinking and having a good time, not realizing that God himself was going to judge them one day. And listen, and the Bible says, and I'm done, the Bible says that, that not only is he going to judge you, but he says, but this day, mm, mm, mm. that the, the, the New Living says that very night, God Himself will judge him. Listen, listen. This this is a real tragedy, y'all. Is that God judged him because even after all that he heard, even after all the interpretation that was made, he did nothing. You remember, he blessed David, Daniel. But he made no repentance of himself. If you read chapters 2, 3, and 4 of, of Daniel, uh, whether it was in the lion den and the fiery furnace, at the end, the king always repented. Not so in chapter 5. The king never repents. The king never tells God, I'm sorry for what I've done. My question to you this morning is if God came by your place judge your heart today, what would he find? Do you ever take the time to tell the Lord I'm sorry? Do you ever take the time to tell the Lord I've done wrong, I failed in this? And, and, and listen, I'm not saying that you got to get before the church, but listen, have you ever just talked with God and said, I messed up in this and I've done wrong? Huh? I've, I've messed up in it. Listen, and, 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 and the problem is, is that he never repented. But then, then the second thing, y'all, is he took God for granted. After all that God had given him, 
He took God. He blessed him with a kingdom that he didn't deserve, and yet God gave it to him. And yet he took God for granted. And I want to suggest to you, my brothers and sisters, sometimes you and I, uh, listen, we may not like the job we have, but you ought to be thankful. <laughs> You ought to be grateful that you got a job. Listen, you may not even like the husband or wife that God gave you right now. But I want to suggest you ought to be thankful that God gave it unto you. Listen, you may not be thankful for the car, the house that you live in. Uh, but listen, listen, you ought to thank the Lord that I got one. And one and more water is going through it. I want to suggest, my brother, every now and then, we've got to stop looking over on the other side when looking at what others got and learn to thank God for what you've already given unto me. Listen, listen, I, I told you I, had, I was going to stop, but can I just slide this one last thing into you? There's one thing that we have that Belchizer didn't have. Belchizer, that day, God judged him. Uh, uh, the Bible says that, uh, you remember the man had built the barns and, and uh, he was trying to figure out how he could build more. And the Bible says, I believe Luke writes it, he says, thy food, today, not tomorrow, but today, you will be judged. But listen, listen. I, 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 want, I want to suggest uh, one good thing that we have that he didn't have is Jesus Christ as our Lord and our Savior. Listen, I want to make. I want to suggest y'all. It makes a difference because God through Jesus give you time to get it right. God through Jesus Christ. Jesus hung, bled, and died for your sins and my sins. And through him, God gives us time to get it right. Because of God's mercy through him, God gives us an opportunity to rise every morning and receive new mercies every day. Because of Jesus Christ, God gives us another opportunity every day that we wake up. God gives us another opportunity to get it right. But I want to argue, y'all, that God is long-suffering. God is gracious. But listen, God is also a judge. And the real question this morning is, what are you waiting for today? Have you recognized and examined your own self and say, Lord, I've fallen short of your glory? Lord, uh, uh, I've not done all that you could. Lord, I've taken some things for granted, but God, now I give you glory for it. But most of all, have you trusted in his son, Jesus Christ, our Lord and our Savior, who died one Friday, but rose the third day morning with all power of heaven and earth in his hands? Listen, I want to argue, y'all. God is trying to tell you something. But listen, my brothers and sisters, only you know what God is speaking to you and how you should respond. And I want to ask you to hear his voice and respond unto him today. God, our Father, we come in Jesus' name. We love you, we thank you, we praise you, we honor you with the first fruits of our lips. Oh God, this is not a shouting sermon today, but oh God, I pray that it will fulfill all that you sent it forth to do. Oh God, minister to us right now, oh God. Oh, God, we need to hear from heaven, oh, God. God, we, we, we've taken time to examine our own selves, oh, God. And we, we see areas in our lives that we, uh, we don't measure up, God. And, God, uh, we give it to you, oh, God, and ask that you would make us again another, oh, God. And, oh, God, that you would use us further in your kingdom. Transform us, oh, God, that we may be like you, oh, God. We trust Jesus Christ as our Lord and our Savior, and we trust him to make our life brand new. Do a work in us, oh God. And oh God, we believe that you're waiting for us to respond. And oh God, we surrender our lives to you, for we ask it all, Father, in Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. The door of the church is open, and I, I invite you to come to the Lord Jesus Christ today. <clears throat> I pray that something said or done that will encourage and that will strengthen you. I pray this morning uh, that somehow you will see the writing on the wall, oh God. 
and that you acknowledge that, yeah, God, you're speaking to me. Yea, God, I've missed the mark, but, but, oh, God, I come repenting unto you and asking you to take me as I am and move in my life and make my life brand new. If you're here today, if you've never trusted him as your Lord and Savior, won't you come? You may be here say, I've trusted him as my Lord and Savior, uh, but I just want to rededicate myself. I, uh, I want to be a part of a church that will guide and lead me. This invitation is to you on today. room that's time for you won't you surrender to him today God for our music ministry. Listen, uh, well, two quick updates. Uh, I do want to remind you about the membership update cards. And what we're asking you all is if everybody will take the time and to fill out uh, uh, this, uh, go to this QR code. You can do it on your smartphone uh, uh, or you can do it on your envelope. But we need everyone to update their information. I know you may have been a membership 30, 50 years, but we're asking everybody to do it so that we can put it into a, a reliable uh, system so that we can uh, keep good contact and information uh, with, our, with our members. Also, on this Saturday, the Martin Luther King Parade uh, will be on Saturday, uh, 
Sunday, I'm sorry, Sunday, uh, beginning at 2 o'clock p.m., and uh, we invite you to come and be a part of it. It will uh, begin from the Mega Evers, um, from Mega Evers to the Mega Evers Library, and so we invite you to come and to be be a part of that. Also, on um, January the 21st, uh, the seniors ministry will be meeting uh, here at the church uh, in the gymnasium. That's the third Saturday. Uh, the seniors ministry will be meeting. We're inviting all of you to come and to be a part of that. Uh, in our close today, I have a number of people I want to ask that you would pray for. I ask that you would remember Deacon Carnell Ketchins in your prayers. He's been in a hospital, but he's home. Uh, he sent message this morning, but I ask that you would continue to lift him up. Uh, I talked to the daughter of Sister Eddie Jenkins, and she asked that we would continue to pray for Sister Jenkins. Uh, she's she's had some number of episodes here here lately, and. Uh, uh, she needs our prayers, and so she's still in Dallas there. I ask that you would lift her up. Also, I ask that you would lift up Sister Ethel Carson, uh, uh, Reverend Carson's wife. She's in the Baptist Hospital. She had a procedure on, uh, on Monday, and uh, they had to go back in suddenly again on yesterday. And uh, so I've not heard from him this morning, but uh, you all lift up Sister Carson in a, in a, in a special way. She's, she's been really, really ill. I uh, ask that you would continue to remember uh, uh, James and Lily Russell and the death of their uh, daughter, Sister Giles, and also the Purnell family uh, in the death of Brother uh, Purnell. He was laid to rest on yesterday, and I ask that you all would pray for them. Listen, would you bow with us in a word of prayer? God, our Father, we come in Jesus' name. We love you. We thank you. We honor you with the first fruits of our lips. Forgive us of our sins and our trespasses, oh God. And God, uh, we thank you for just one more day, oh God, another opportunity to get it right before you. Oh God, speak, oh God, to our hearts and our minds, oh God. And then, God, uh, we pray for those that are sick. And, oh, God, uh, we know that you are a healer, oh, God. And by your stripes, we are made whole. We are made well again. God, in the name of Jesus, oh, God, touch right now, Lord Jesus. And we lift up, oh, God, Sister Carson, oh, God, realizing you made her know all there is to know about her. Touch her body from her head to her toe, oh, God. And, God, we lift up, oh, God, Sister, Sister uh uh, Jenkins, oh God, and we just ask for your divine intervention in her situation. God, we pray for little Master uh, Samaje, oh God, and pray your healing hands upon her. And those families that are bereaved, we pray that you will comfort God, strengthen and keep them. And then, God, we ask that you bless us, oh God, as we leave this place, but never from your presence. Go with us, stand by us, guide us, and strengthen us. We ask that you would bless us indeed, O oh God, enlarge our territory. And we ask that your hand be with us. We ask that you keep us from sin and evil, that we may not cause pain. We ask this in Jesus' name we pray. And all the saints of God said amen and amen. We invite you to rise at this time, and we leave you in the hands of our ushers. <laughs>